The subject of today's micromicro tutorial is Amanita virosa. These are beautiful, tall, elegant white mushrooms, but their common name is the destroying angel, and that is because they are deadly poisonous. The toxin that these fungi produce initially cause some sickness, upset stomach, etc. It gets better, but in a week or two, what the toxin will have done is dissolved your organs from the inside and you get sick again and there's no, it's too late at this point for antitoxin, more than likely. You are dead man walking. So we're gonna learn how to make these and I hope this tutorial will be short and sharp and you will enjoy it. Welcome to the Mycology Minute, where I take one minute to teach you a little bit about the fungus that we're going to work on. Today's fungus is Ammonita virosa, or the Destroying Angel. The interesting thing about this mushroom, uh, if you remember my tutorial earlier that I said uh, not all fungi have the same form, and the neat thing about Ammonita is it's got both the cup and the ring, or the veil, and the veil can take various forms, but basically you end up with a mushroom that looks like this. The ground level is, of course, here, though usually the cup is buried in detritus, grass, and leavings and stuff. So a lot of times you have to dig it up to see the cup. But basically, you get the filaments off the bottom, and there you go. The reason this forms is that when this is all small and round or egg-shaped, the cup and the veil are actually connected. And as it expands, the top tears off. You get a, a thin spot. And some of it tears off right here and becomes part of the cup, and the other part stays up high and becomes part of the veil. And the veil may not always be visible. These dry up and have a tendency to fall apart, but when they are fresh, they are absolutely beautiful. And that's it. There's your Mycology Minute. Since the most distinctive part of this particular mushroom is the stem. I'm going to start by focusing on that. I've just set up my typical drill lathe, uh, though I am using a rotary tool called a um, Fordham, but you could do the same thing with a drill bit. So what I'm going to do is quickly carve the stem and only take as much time to describe what I'm doing as it takes to do it. So right now I'm rounding the cap a little bit. This just makes it easier to push this in and get the cap to spread nicely. And then I'm gonna make the veil. So right below the cap, the, I'm using just a triangular file. There we go. And I'm gonna make it, see that? I got a nice little curve going to that veil. And then if I wanna bring it down, probably bring it down a little farther. There we go. And then um, the, the veil, of course, hangs out, so the stem is gonna go in a little bit. So I'm gonna make a cut right underneath the bottom of the veil. And then I'm gonna take the flat part of the file and flatten the stem out underneath the veil. Now, I don't wanna make it too flat, just a little bit, like so. So we have the, the top that pushes in, we've got the veil, and then we've got the stem. And at the bottom, I'm gonna make the cup. So the way I'm gonna make the cup since this piece of wood is finite in size, is I'm gonna thin out the stem at the top of the cup, and then I'm gonna go in and round the bottom of the cup. So, I'm just gonna use the file. I don't wanna make a bulbous stem, I just wanna make it straight down. There we go, so that's the top of the cup, and then I'm just gonna curve the bottom so it looks a little more like a cup. So I'm using the edge of the file to cut a groove. And I'm coming around like that. There we go. So there we have, once that stops going, we have the cup, we have the stem, we have the veil or the ring, and then we have the cap, which is nothing. It's just a, a tool that we use to help spread the, the top out a little bit more evenly. And then what I will do off camera is I will cheat this whole pin forward a little bit, and then I'll take another, either this triangular file or maybe a little square one, and I'll, make, I'll just file this down until I have a little pin in the bottom so I can just take it and stick it in. Uh, we'll be back as soon as that's done. Okay, here's the pin done. I just did it off camera because it is tricky. It's easy to, to 
overdo the pin and end up snapping off the whole piece. But it worked out fine. Um, you can see it's just a little narrower and all I'll do then is drill a hole into wherever I want to stick it into, put a little glue in and pop it in and, and it'll be good. So there we are, stem's done. You guys have seen me make mushroom caps before, so this will be nothing new. Uh, I take a little bit of green stuff, I roll it into a ball in the palm of my hand, and then I use uh, wax paper and a little bit of water to help me flatten it into a cap. Unfortunately, I'm out of wax paper at the moment, so we're just gonna have to do it the hard way. So, put a little water on the palm of my hand, a little bit on my finger, smash it down, and kind of roll my hand around in order to get the edges thinner than the center. Doesn't have to be perfect. And then I take the stem and push the cap in like so. And then when I flip it over, I get a nice mushroom shape. Now this one is a little steep for my liking. In other words, I don't quite want it coming down on that angle. So I'm just going to Gently encourage it to come up a little flatter. There we go. And that, that's pretty good. So there's our Ammonita. All ready to go. All we need to do is let that dry. And then we'll get to painting. On to painting. I start um, with a simple white primer. You can spray this on if you want, but you're going to be wasting a ton of paint. So I just use, uh, this is my airbrush primer. It's uh, again produced by um, Vallejo. Uh, it's a little thin. It takes a couple of coats if you're going to paint it on. I mean, it works great as an airbrushing primer, but um, I kind of like it, the fact that it's a little thin because it doesn't always give you a perfect coat. And since few things in nature are perfect, I find that it works very well. Anyway, I'm gonna, I put the white on the primer. Once that's dry, I use another Vallejo product. This is called a pale wash. It's just a really pale gray color, something you can make on your own. Um, and that is a, a pretty good wash for white because it does give a little bit of depth and texture without totally screwing up the white. And then in the end, I'll come back with any white paint. I, I seem to be all Vallejo today, but really it's, it, I have a mix of GW and Vallejo and P3 paints. I just grab whatever's handy. Um, and this could be, uh, you could apply it as a dry brush. Um, this is pretty pigment heavy, so it's going to give you a really clean white as opposed to the primer, which is kind of a grayish white. Uh, and so I will clean it up either with a dry brush or I'll thin it out and use a series of coats to bring up the white in the highlights and uh, you end up with a pretty good model. So let's take a look and shoot ahead and see what it looks like after the wash and then after the final white. Here we are after the gray wash. Um, it's still slick and shiny, it hasn't dried off yet. Um, with washes, of course, you apply them fairly heavily but you don't want them to stay heavy. So what I will do is I will kind of goop it on and then I will get the wash off the brush, tap the brush so the excess water comes off and then I will wipe it over and pick up the excess gray because I don't actually want this whole thing to be gray. So we're going to let that dry thoroughly and then we're going to come back with the white. Here we are after the white has been added on, pardon my shaky hand, but I wanted to get you a close up of the fungus. So what I did is I dry brushed the cap. Um, unfortunately you can't see a lot of detail, but I dry brushed the cap starting from the top of the cap and brushing out towards the outside because I don't want distinct rings of color to be visible. And then the stem, uh, then the, the, you can see the, the ring just underneath the cap. That I did um, fairly heavily in white. You, effectively, it was more of a, an actual painting than a dry brush. I dry brushed the center of the stem, leaving the top and the bottom a little gray. And then again, I did a pretty heavy white on the bottom of the, on the cup, especially up near the top. It gives me some gradients between the shades. And then this is going to be accentuated. The last step is I'm going to take a little bit of black wash and 
hit these those ring areas right where the cup meets the stem and where the veil meets the stem up at the top just to accentuate that a little bit and then what I did is afterwards I came in on the cap and I added a little bit of thin down pure white to the top of the cap and then to the edge of the cap around the outsides again always brushing from the center towards the outside uh, to blur those lines of what is one color and what is the next and then I cleaned uh, rinsed off the brush tapped it off for the most part and then just came in and hit it again and uh, just to again to kind of blend those lines so it's a little hard to see the gradient but it is there it's a little bit darker in the middle of the cap than anywhere else so let's do the last little stop and we'll be done the painting is now done all i did was add a little bit of black wash right below the um, the ring and right above the cup at the stems just to give it a little bit of distinction and now we're done so what i will do is i will cut the pin right here and just uh, probably insert it in one of my little dioramas that is already put together and I'll show you the final result. Here we are all done. Uh, the fun mushroom I just did is the one on the far left, the big one. Um, that's all there is to it. All I did, uh, one nice thing about working in cork is all I did was take this all and punch a hole through the cork and then I just stuck that right in and that's even without glue that's not going to come out of there because after I poke the coal the cork is going to expand and put pressure on that little pin so that's what the little arrangement looks like now I think it looks quite good so there you go Ammonita virosa in um, not too long pretty easy to do once again thank you everybody for watching I hope you enjoyed the video don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And we'll see you next time on Gitsapalooza.